And I want to continue painting down here. And this is going to be, I'm going to use, my base coat is going to be tangerine. And I love this color. This is one of my favorites. I'm, a, I'm an orange person in case you haven't figured that out by looking at my stuff, if you have. Um, you'll notice that orange figures strongly. I once had a client tell me that she wanted a custom job done and she said, I want every color but that orange you always use. And I had to laugh because she's right. I, I use tangerine quite a bit in a lot of my work. Um, because I think it's a really pretty happy color and I'm all about doing happy stuff with this. So I'm laying a base coat down. Um, notice I'm getting a little lighter as I, as I get to this area over here. And, and this one's going to have to be quick because we want to keep the area wet. But we're going to come in with a dramatically, I'm going to call it dramatic, it is somewhat dramatic, but a different color for the edge and not anything that would actually be considered complimentary, um, but it's kind of more um, in the range of the reds, which I know, yes, it does go with that, but I'm also gonna throw a little bit of mauve in there too. So I'm gonna do this with an intense pencil because I don't want the amount that I can get with all of this color that from, from the blocks, so I wanted just a tiny bit. And the way I do that is I'm gonna dip my brush into plain fabric medium. Let's get this where you can see this. And I'm gonna rub the brush just a little bit there. Oh, you can see I'm getting a bit of color. All right, once I've done that, I'm gonna start just kind of along these edges and don't worry, I'm, I'm putting a lot down at first, but I'm gonna spread this around once I, I get this down, because everything's still wet. And you can do this when it's still wet like this, um, but you gotta make sure that it, it, it maintains being wet or otherwise you'll get it really a strong color. So then I'm coming back in and I'm just blending and trying to spread the color as best as possible. And that looks really good. Now, what I wanna do is come in just in those corners, and this is mauve, and I'm gonna put just a tiny, tiny bit of mauve right down here. Maybe carry that up a little bit, and maybe just right here inside that loop. And then blend accordingly. Now, if you have a color wheel and you want to do try this at home, I, I look for complementary colors across the color wheel. I, I like stepping out. Oh, look at the shadow that that creates. That's stupendous. I really, really like that. You know, so first you've got the tangerine, then you come in with that deeper chili red, and then, oh gosh, you add that purple on top of it. That's outstanding. I, I couldn't be happier with that. Hi everyone, so I'm back and I want to show you a quickie um, thing that, that of course this always happens in every single class, in which case I completely forgot to color this green strip, you know, based on what we kind of did over here. So I still have, this is again why the blocks are really easy to use and why sometimes they can be a benefit to have rather than the pencils. So what I'm gonna do is, just as I did earlier, I'm going to dip my brush in the fabric medium. We're gonna come over here. Don't worry about that bit of orange that you saw there. Actually, the more color you lay down, um, having some very strong different colors, and I'm gonna show you this here in a minute, um, it is not such a bad thing. So let me move this plate over, and we're just gonna coat it really lightly with a bit of the green. Now let's come back over. Let's pull in, let's pull in some of the dark green. I think we've got some there. Again, don't worry about that brown, it's okay. You know, there is brown in nature and that doesn't mean such a bad thing. So let me come down here and put now that down there. So that's a little bit darker, but I'm gonna leave that little tip right at the bottom 
And I'm gonna come over and dip my brush just ever so slightly into the burnt orange. And I'm gonna put under the plate just a tiny bit. Oh yeah, that looks so good. So there's a situation where you wanna use maybe a, a, a totally two different colors to get kind of a, a realistic look for your work. Now, this is really just about all the techniques that I have for this block. I'm gonna zoom out and let you see what it looks like. It's not finished, but what I will do is I will get it done and then we will do a final little video on where to go from here, uh, additional things that you can do to this block, what you're gonna to wanna to do up your borders and also your little beads right here. But most of the things that you have now seen up to this point are the techniques that you can take and use elsewhere. I think the big thing I want you to take away though is, is how well you can use ink tents, tents blocks. Let me say that again, ink tents blocks to get a wide coverage in a big area without having to resort to pencils. So I wanted to show everyone one last kind of tip with these. And do you see how it's all kind of sparkly, shiny? That's because I used my fabric medium on this and I forgot to clean it off. So you can see kind of the side that looks good and then the side that, in fact, there's even a bunch right here um, and here. So I'm going to just put this down on the paper plate and show you what I do to get rid of it and trying not to get rid of too much, but I'm actually kind of just pulling away and the gunk that ends up on my knife is the fabric medium. Now, once you've done that, this is very pure, clean um, block. So you could use that or do like what I'm going to do, which is put fabric medium down here in order to use the scrapings. Because most of the time, your fabric medium, dried fabric medium, is going to stay on your knife. Yeah, it's a knife that obviously was broken. Don't do this with your good kitchen knives. Uh, your husband or your significant other will probably kill you if you do that. So find a yucky old knife to do this with and just scrape it off if you should accidentally get it on your block. And you can do the same thing with your pencil, by the way, but usually a pencil sharpener works just as well. So let's do a quick run through on how to color this daisy up here. I've just started putting down the yellow. And again, I'm using the yellow paint that I created earlier. Um, back to what I was saying about this paint. Um, surprisingly, with the extender in this, and I, I made this probably, oh gosh, two hours ago, and it's still usable. So it's the other reason why I like to encourage people to take pencil tips and the ink tents blocks and turn them into fabric paint is because the stuff really lasts for a long time. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a base coat of the yellow. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some of the red that I did earlier. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot more painted. Um, most of it was just, you know, very straightforward. Nothing that um, you wouldn't know how to do after watching some of the parts of this video. So the very first thing I'm going to do is, after I wash my brush out, and dry it off with a paper towel. Okay. I'm going to take a bit of the orange. Again, I'm going to show you my plate. This is the orange that we made earlier. And I'm just going to come in and put just very, very light kind of um, just just a, a hint of the orange on the petals. Oh, perfect. Just ever so slightly. Oop, maybe that's a little too dark, but I'll show you how to get rid of that here in just a sec. Let me get the rest of these done. So I want just that really light, super, you know, just pale, pale, pale orange that kind of shoots out the middle um, of the, 
Let me see, I need a little bit more over here. Just, just a little bit. Now, um, before it gets too late, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if you get a lot of color on there, just dab it um, with your uh, paper towel and it does lift the color off here pretty easily. Oh, there, that's what we're looking for. And see, you'll get color like that, which is, is it's easy enough. And again, gets back to why I enjoy using basically paints is because a lot of times it's, it's very easy to lift the color and um, work with it before it starts drying out. You know, fabric markers and gel pens, they basically dry on the spot and they're, they have their purpose but it's one of the reasons why I really, really like um, using paint type stuff is because you can work it a little bit longer. Now I just realized I missed a petal right here, so let's go back in and pick that up and throw a tiny bit of orange on there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Chili Red pencil, okay? And I'm gonna come in here just down here at the base and start kind of just putting streaks of color in the center. And do it while it's still wet. That's how this works the best. And you can make them kind of, you know, streak out a bit. Just just nothing that looks very um, OCD-ish. <laughs> um, you want it to kind of look random. Now, once you've done that, what I want you to do is actually go back and dip your brush, not into plain fabric medium, which you could, but choose your yellow because we're just basically putting an overcast to that and just blend. Oh, look at that. That looks so good. So, so you're keeping that yellow because that's the base color, but you're blending that red Oh, this is nice, I like this. Um, I did put streaks too hard. By the way, I mean, this is a lesson learned. You have to be very careful when you're working with a pencil on wet fabric um, because it can leave a really harsh, and I'm heavy handed by the way, which means that when I push down, I push down hard on a pencil tip. So back to the old saying, do as I say, not as I do. Um, be light-handed when you're putting streaks of color on something that's already wet because it will cause these kind of streaks. But, you know, I always like to show you guys what not to do as much as I like to show you what to do. Okay, and one last little bit. Um, let's zoom in here real quick. Can you see the base? It looks like it needs just a tiny bit, just kind of make a, a semicircle of color around that to, to hide any of the white. Okay, once you've done that, and then just come in and rub your brush against it and soften up that line. You were just sort of looking to hide the color, plus it gives the depth of the color going into the flower. Okay, that's basically it for this block, for just the block itself. I will come back with a bit of bonus video that's going to show you what to do with this outside. Now that's an intermediate class that I teach, but enough of you have taken my classes that I'd like to kind of pass some of this on to you as to what to do with this white background once you finish the block.